Well hello and welcome back to the channel. Today I am going to be testing some technology in a car. This is full self-drive technology supervised by Tesla. It is something that's been promised for a long time. I bought full self-drive on my Model 3 in 2019, six years ago, and I still haven't got it yet. But this is the very latest Model Y that does happen to have the full self-driving. They've lent it to me for the weekend and I want to try it out. Well, I've seen it on YouTube and I've heard a lot about it and I'm pretty excited about this technology. I'll explain why in a minute. But let's get driving and we can start talking. So first of all, uh, I'm sitting here in Christchurch and I'm just going to pick somewhere on the map. I'm going to go over here. Okay, this is somewhere in, this is somewhere in Kashmir. I'm just going to press a location and I'm going to hit go. And when I'm ready, all I need to do is press this button on the steering wheel and away it goes. Now I'm doing nothing, hands off the wheel. I'll just describe what I can see, what's going on around me now while I'm happening. So it's going to tell me to do a left turn here on Antigua Street or Antigua Street as we sometimes call it. And uh, I've got traffic lights, car in front. Green light, bicycle lane on my left, bicycle lanes everywhere. We're going to spin around. I'm just being super cautious because I can take over at any moment if I need to. We've got a bicycle lane on the left of the road with a giant concrete hump on it. I mean, we could talk about bicycle lanes, couldn't we? That could be another video, but let's, let's not. That car was slowing down a little bit, so it just gently did what a normal driver would do, just slowed down somewhat, and then away it went. Now, the thing about full self-drive supervised is that you don't have to keep touching the wheel to kind of nag the car to tell you tell it you're there. Uh, here's an interesting scenario. The, the road has a bit of a kink and there's some parked cars. Again, just like a normal driver, it just came out and it came back in and it's going to be taking the straight lead head lane over, um, over this, uh, this motorway pass. Yeah, so the thing is you don't have to keep nagging the wheel <clears throat> to tell it that you're uh, here, but you do have to keep looking forward and looking around you because this camera up here is going to be uh, is going to be calling out for um, your attention all the time and it's going to be observing to see whether you're paying attention and if you're not paying attention it's going to disengage it's going to warn you and then it's going to disengage those cars are moving are inching forward because of the green light my car did nothing now that they're moving it's moving so that's an interesting behavior uh, some drivers might actually inch forward in order to just keep mudging forward, but this one didn't, so that's interesting. But it was very smooth, fantastic. It didn't need to be going forward. Okay, we've got a bit of a corner here. I wouldn't say it's a blind corner, but it's a long sweeping corner. It's parked cars on the left, nervously hovering over the brake. There's a car there that was stuck out of, the, of its car park a little bit. Navigated it perfectly. And uh, yeah, away we go. Now, I have been using this system for the last couple of days. I've got the car for the weekend, I've been using it, and I have to say I'm pretty impressed. I wasn't sure whether I would make a video about it, because there's a lot of videos already made, but I do want to share my thoughts on this technology, because I think the technology is underrated. Like, I, the, the press just want to give it negative press all the time but that's the that's the mainstream media we probably shouldn't really be watching that this is pretty cool technology and it's it is very very advanced now there's a car in front of me that is could turn in front of me but they're not so that's good so just a little bit of self-defense there I was, I was watching to see what we we're doing obviously this is not perfect technology and you know in the time I've had it there's just been a couple of moments where it's been a little bit too enthusiastic about pulling out or merging um, and it has just just done that it tends to ear a little bit more on the side of do it rather than maybe don't do it which is why it's supervised but it's learning and the thing is my exp here we go so we've got an interesting situation here we're turning right just like that car and that's perfect yeah, that was, that was really well handled for that particular turn. Very impressed. As it's learning, it's getting better. And I've noticed, for example, on my road trip that I do uh, going to and from Cass Bay, there's a lot of 
unmarked roads and it's just windy and windy. Uh, the first couple of times we did it, uh, it had a couple of moments where it, it wanted to just go across the center line a little bit. <clears throat> Today I did it, the same, the same piece of road, absolutely perfect. So it's obviously learning, putting it back into the neural net and it's uh, improving it and learning from its mistakes. We should all do that. Okay, um, let's just tap on the map here to see where it's taking me. So it's going to go all the way straight ahead to Barrington Street and then it's going to take a left onto Barrington Street. So pretty pretty straightforward, but you know there are a lot of In a lot of things going on. Pedestrian crossing, cyclists, people walking out of cars, you know, it's not the busiest of days. It's a Saturday afternoon, but still lots now of things to be aware of. Street. Now we're going to take a left, left turn. Got another ugly Tesla Model Y there parked in front of us. Now this has to sort of get across into this left lane. That's done that really, really well. This is a giveaway. There's a car I would give way to that car. And it's turning, which is interesting. So really helpful New Zealand driver. And there we go. Now here's, look at this. So <laughs> I've seen this a number of times. That grey car was uh we had to give way to it which is fine as the car was passing the nose of this car just like a human driver this car just started to pull out and and take its take its point now that's exactly what a normal driver would do uh and doing things like that all the time just makes it feel really really natural in 200 meters enter the roundabout and take the gee we're nearly going to be there i think i need to add a stop so i'm going to do that um i'll just go add stop and I will put in um, another different street, something from history. Now enter the roundabout. Notice how it's flashing blue. Exit. It's already calculated that I'm going to be changing and I'm taking the first exit now rather than going to the right and it's adding in my other destination. Pretty cool. I mean this is pretty cool. <laughs> Woo. Tell you what, I'm, I know it sounds like I'm probably drinking the Kool-Aid you know, and wearing the t-shirt, got the lunchbox, all that kind of stuff. And, you know, there might be some truth to that, but you cannot deny the fact that this car is driving itself with, without my intervention. It's got some really tricky traffic situations and it's been handling it absolutely perfectly, with the exception of a couple of very minor things, which... Um, as I mentioned, just pulling out into traffic, which uh, I probably wouldn't have done. Now this roundabout is tricky, and it's handled it absolutely perfect. It didn't hesitate, it didn't sort of freak out, it confidently went in there. There was a speed hump, it slowed for the speed hump, and then absolutely perfect. Pretty cool, pretty cool. So, what are my um, thoughts on why this is great technology? Well. I'm 53 years old, but one day I won't be 53. I'll be older than that. And, and one day it's possible, I know this sounds a long way away and it is, but you know, I might get my driver's license taken revoked, revoked because I might be just too old to be able to drive and concentrate. I might not have the cognitive function. I mean, I hope I do, I hope I do. Well into my 90s, but you know, could be eyesight, could be anything. And to know that in the future, uh, and in fact in the not too distant future, you know, people are going to be able to have this technology in their car and where they would maybe normally lose their license and therefore lose their independence, they would actually be able to still get in a car, have a car in their garage, get in their car, put in where they want to go and hit go and have the car drive you there. Now obviously there's a lot of legislation and stuff to get passed before all of that's possible, but it is all possible and it is all happening. Uh, and it's pretty jolly exciting and I think that use case alone is exciting and fantastic uh, obviously there's another use case that that uh, Tesla and Elon Musk have talked about and that is robo taxis so that is the situation where you have a car like this you own your car and when you're not using your car you can essentially have it out there behaving like an uber driver going around picking people up dropping people off and you know charging for taxi rides that's interesting. Uh, that's interesting. Will it make you enough money to, um, you know, offset your lease of your car? Maybe it will. Maybe they will they will lease you a car and, and 
deduct it from all of your income? I don't know. There's a lot of really interesting options and very, very exciting things coming from AI robots. Okay, so here's another crossing. So this is cool. There's a car that's pulling out wanting to go. We just confidently went through those lights. We've got a, a right onto a little smaller street and there's a there's a concrete hump in the middle of the road so we're avoiding that no problem at all we're keeping into our space and yeah i can actually go in here now and in edit my meters, trip turn left onto montrose street, then montrose street. Will be on the right. i can just take away that that stop and click done <clears throat> So all I did there is uh, I was going to be stopping just up here, but I just removed that stop and I'm now telling it to go back where we were, but it's going to be taking a completely different route this time because we are, we're flowing in a different direction. Great stuff. It's interesting, um, thinking of AI, there was a recent Channel 4, UK Channel 4 documentary about AI taking jobs and replacing people. And I think about this because I'm thinking Uber drivers um, are going to get replaced. Uber's already announced that they're working on an autonomous fleet of cars, I think, in Australia or for Australia. And the entire TV show on in Channel 4 was meters, uh, hosted right by a, or an AI generated a human. Because I'm not real. In a British TV first, I'm actually an AI presenter. So that's interesting. Right, speed hump, slow down perfectly, give way. Now there's a car coming, I would not go, yep, perfect. And there's another one coming in front of me, that's great, and look at that. Just as the car split, we went. That's great, that's so good. Now here's a speed hump, and okay, it, it hit it harder than I would have, but this, the air suspension in this car is fine. There's another speed up here, speed up here and it's slowing down this one's got better markings on the road so it's slowed down for that one and here's another speed hump we have way too many speed humps i think speed humps and bike lanes that's another video isn't it comment down below as we just come out of this roundabout i wanted to say one more thing the smoothness of the whole experience is really quite different to the auto steer feature that you will have if you've got a, an older Tesla like mine and you've probably had it for a long time where it will keep a distance between the car in front and, and it will track the speed that you set but it will also auto steer and it will move around things. Now that, that is nothing like, nothing like the full autopilot. The full autopilot is it does things that a human driver would do. It, it gently moves away from a cyclist if they're in the left lane, and in, in their cycle lane. It will gently move away from them, and it will move a little bit more to the center of the road without, without necessarily crossing the road. And I say necessarily, because there are circumstances where it has to, and it will just usually indicate and pass. But the whole experience of approaching a corner and it obviously knows how that corner is mapped out so right now it's just slowing down for the corner and it's taking the corner like a human does and as it gets to the center apex it'll start to move away faster again just like a human drives it's pretty impressive and it feels just like a human is doing the driving for you but actually quite a good quite a good human driver you know i've been in a lot of ubers where you would say they were very, very bad, very bad drivers. Um, yeah, probably dozens and dozens actually where they're bad drivers, they're usually on their phone. They normally uh, got two screens that they're playing around with. Sometimes they're talking to somebody on the phone as well, uh, not generally paying attention, meters, driving aggressively. You don't get any of that. You don't get any of that kind of behavior with what, a car that's a robot. Anyway, there's not much more I can show you other than I'm just just me being driven around town rather boring but it is really really interesting and I think my takeaway and my comment is this technology is actually you know a lot further ahead than than maybe the media portray and I think it's really exciting 
and it's not perfect Man, but it's I getting perfect and the, you know the, the, the rate at which it's getting better is sort of happening in an exponential way much like with AI so that's exciting now don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more videos about cars and um, I will see you in the next one